Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This video tutorial is for students who are in Algebra 2 Goal 3. We, As we continue to go through at Goal 3 in basically reverse order, next up is going to be Family 5. We're going to be talking about negative exponents. The first two topics are pitifully simple, and even the last topic is actually very straightforward. The only one that causes any particular challenge is ordering numbers with... Um, ordering numbers with negative exponents, which we'll get to in a little bit. First, let's zoom in a little bit and start talking about what negative exponents actually do. All negative exponents mean negative exponents. All it means is that you flip where you are in your fraction. Flip where you are in your fraction. So, for example, if we have something like um, x over 3 to the negative 2, that negative 2 tells me that this 3, which is on the bottom of the fraction, needs to move up to become 3 squared x, which simplifies to 9x. That's what we're trying to shoot for. If we have something like 2 to the negative 1 power. That means this is 2 over 1, right? So that means this 2, which is on the top of the fraction, flips where it is, and it becomes 1 over 2 to the first power, which is just 1 over 2. That's what they're getting you used to. And for here, evaluating with a negative exponent specifically, they're getting you used to the fact that you can, in fact, flip an entire fraction. So this is to the negative first power. All that means is my answer is going to be 8 over 3. Negative first power flip my fraction, it's going to be 2 over 5. Not that I can write it correctly. There we go. What if it's a negative number? Eh, it's still the same. So this negative 2 means that this number is in the wrong spot because that's negative 2 over 1. we got to take it and move it. So what are we going to get? We're going to get 1 over negative 2 squared. Again, parentheses are, parentheses are important. We want to make sure that this negative, it's not included with the exponent, so we have to tack it on after the fact. What is 2 squared? 1 over negative 4. All right, another one we have, again, we're going to have that negative exponent that tells me that my 3 over 1, I need to flip it. So it becomes 1 over negative 3, and it's to the first power, which means it's just 1 over negative 3. So again, in literally less than two min 3 minutes, we have gotten the first two topics done. Okay, let's do the medium topic. Let's do rewriting with a negative exponent. What they want you to do for this topic is now that you're comfortable with flipping your fractions, you kind of want to be careful about where your negative exponent is. So for example, this negative 5 is only solely exclusively attached to the V. So the V is the only part that's getting moved. So it becomes V to the fifth over negative 5. Let's go through a uh, hypothetical. If this was 1 over negative 5v to the negative 5th, then everything inside would be flipped and it would be negative 5v to the 5th. There's the difference, okay? If it's inclusive, that means you're going to have it in parentheses and then everything associated with the parentheses can move. But if it's just attached to just the one letter, then it only affects the one letter. Same thing over here. We have an invisible line here between our 3 and our x. That negative 5 is only, 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 only attached to our x, which means the x is the only place that moves its um, um, number. Did I give myself a third example? I did. Now over here again, we have that negative 5. It only is attached to my x, which means that's the only thing that is moved. So x to the fifth comes up top because we flip our fraction, and the negative 4 stays where it is. So this is all about, I'll write this in big letters to make it subtle, it's all about flipping fractions. That's what you're trying to get used to. How much of a fraction are you flipping? How many ways are you flipping? That kind of thing, okay? So if we're talking about flipping fractions very particularly, they want you to get very used to flipping fractions by giving you some unholy mess like this. So, we have the negative 1, and again, don't do this in your head. Don't do in head. Just because Ms. Dubois can do this in her head 
doesn't mean that students can't. I'm the trained math teacher. I'm the one who has had years of doing this and can do it live in front of students. You guys need the practice for the sake of your sanity. Write it out. So to the negative first, that negative makes us flip our fraction to become 5. 5 to the negative 1. Again, we flip our fraction to become 1 fifth. And now we're ready that we flipped our fractions. What's bigger? 5 or 1 fifth? 5. Next one, flip this. It will be 1 fifth. Okay, so far so good. Flip this. This will be 1 over 5 squared. Remember, it's worth noting, the negative only flips it. You don't actually do the computation. So we actually now have to, now that the negative has been taken care of, what is 5 squared? This is going to be 1 over 25, which is bigger, 1 fifth of a pizza or 1 25th of a pizza? 1 fifth. Next, we're going to flip this, becomes 5. Flip this, it becomes 5 squared, which is 25, which is bigger, 5 or 25? 25. Again, another example, we want to get you used to the flipping of your fractions. We're going to flip this to be 7. We're going to flip this to be 1 over 7 squared, which is 1 over 49. Which one is bigger? The whole number. Flip this to be 1 over 7 squared, which is 1 over 49. Flip this to be 7 squared, which is 49. Which is bigger, 1 49th or 49? The whole number is bigger. Flip this to be a 7. Flip this to be 1 over 7. 7 or 1 7, which is bigger? The whole number. So be very, very careful. Again, the reason why I was able to do this super fast was because I wrote it down. For the students who would watch me do these kinds of topics live on the Chromebook, I would have to visually, not, not visually, but auditorially, I'd have to actually talk it out in order to make sure it made sense. So even for students, students, like you guys have to write this down in order to know what you're doing. But that is everything for negative exponents. I'm going to keep going in reverse order so that I can get my Algebra 2 Goal 3 topics done, hopefully, before we're back to school. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. See you in the next one.